What's up, everybody? Welcome to today's recap. It is May 7th, 2020, and today, unfortunately, is another red day, finishing the day around down $20 again. Um, today was interesting in the fact that I went on an emotional roller coaster. I went to the depths, to the peak, to the depths. And, you know, there's a few, a few lessons I learned I'm going to share with you in the video, but I don't want to make excuses for myself, but I, I, I'm a college student. It's finals right this week and next week, so I've already been exhausted with um, studying and group projects, but trading today has definitely worn me out tenfold. Um, but the, I'll get into lessons in more detail, but I think the takeaway for tomorrow, for tomorrow's session is just take a deep breath, relax. I trade really a few things. I trade a one minute pullback going long in the first couple of minutes. I trade a descending bear, a descending wedge, which is pretty much right here. And I trade a VWAP reclaim or VWAP fail, um, which I'll show later. But of course you lose money when you hop in, when you deviate from your system. But I don't know, it's just the stock market's tricky and there's so much going on internally. It's hard to capture it all. And it's hard to parse through and understand with clarity what's going on. But I feel like doing these videos is cathartic for me and helps me kind of walk through my thought process so I can learn, but also to kind of document my journey with you guys. Maybe you guys pick up some tips. Of course, all these ideas in the video are just mine. Please, whatever you do in the stock market, do it at your own risk. I'm not gonna be held liable for whatever you do, but um, the stock market is risky and I'm just trying to take a stab at it here. Okay, so let's hop in. So my first trade was 9.49 on Tesla. So it was on this candle right here and I hopped in at 7.92.43. Hopped in really at the top of that candle, and that was a mistake. So, let's, let's see how Tesla opened up. It opens up, kind of comes down, reclaims VWAP, pops up, goes down, tests it again, and then starts to go back up. The real and correct entry would have been this one minute pullback right here. Okay, so it comes up, pulls back, tests VWAP again, showing strength, shoots back up, and the correct entry should have been at around 782. Now, that's the correct, in my opinion, the correct entry. I usually never trade a one minute pullback at 9.49. I don't know why I hopped in on it, I don't know what I was thinking. What I usually do at these times is look for a reversal and the descending wedge, which is what we actually saw. We saw is this, you know, consistent lows, but lower highs. I mean, there's support here, but there's waning buyer strength and eventually it kind of crumbles down, which it did. That would have been the right trade. So there's two trades on Tesla that in my mind, obviously in hindsight, were the trades to do. One would be right here at this one minute pullback going long. And the second would be going short around for the break of right here. In my case, getting in at 792 up here, well, I sh even if even if I want to take this trade, which in hindsight I shouldn't have, I should have waited for it to break over the high of this candle, which is about 792.23, to show and confirm that I was going back up. But in fact, I did not. And I should have been reading the level two, but I just looked at the chart and I was like, all right, I'm going to pull a trigger on it. So, okay, so that's that. I'm ending on Tesla down $5.97. Not too bad. Not going to kill me. Next trade was Teba, Teba Pharmaceutical. This had good earnings, and um, usually I don't like to trade like kind of penny stocks, um, or I, and I don't like to trade you know, bio stocks, especially given Corona. Um, yes, there's opportunity, but it's just not for me. I'd rather stick to what I trade, which is a few setups on well-known stocks like Facebook, Microsoft, um, budget tech companies, but also like main brands, Beyond Meat, Boeing, stuff like that. Okay. So I hopped in long on Teva at 11.91 at 9.35, Okay, so that's where I got in. What was I thinking? Well, again, I was thinking, so this was, this was a, a bad trade in many aspects. Let's, let's hop into why. So let's see if sells off, pushes back up above the VWAP, taps it again. First one minute candle right here. That's good. So I got it right here. Um, 
934, right though? 935, okay, I got on this candle. So not bad. Um, and the trade, again, looking back, in the moment, it could have been good, yes, but it really needed to pull back a little bit more, which it did right here. What I should have done was waited, let it pull back more, and then hop in pretty much around here at 1179 and 938. That would have been the better trade. Of course, that's back in hindsight, but um, the lesson to take away is, again, there's a competing interest between hopping in a, because you think it pulled back enough, and then you it's FOMO and a fear of missing out because you don't want to not hop in because you think it pulled back enough. But... The lesson to be, it's just sometimes you're going to lose in trading. And the loss was very tiny. It was around a 28 cents loser, which is honestly not bad. So that's kind of like my average of loss on the trade, which is fine. Okay. The next stock was Roku. Roku, the movie or, Netflix, you know, the box company. Um, okay. So let's take a look here. Roku was a winner, up a dollar thirty-six. So right now I'm down a little bit, but Roku is a solid winner, pretty much. My average winner is around a dollar twenty. Average loser is around probably like thirty, forty cents, about three times. Okay, so I hopped in Roku at nine seventy, nine thirty-seven at one thirty-three. So pretty much around this line right here. So. You know, it kind of opens up, first pullback, and I hop in for the new one minute high. So that's a solid trade. That's pretty much what I was going for on Teva. This one worked out, and of course, I let the winner run, and which is why I have a higher winner in this compared to like the magnitude of the gain is greater than the magnitude of the loss because I let this run, whereas for Teva, I cut my losses short. So I got in around here, 9.37, and I sold. I was letting it run. I sold at 10.34, actually, so kind of I kind of let her run kind of pulled back up here 1034 kind of sold it right here and market was starting to go down at around 134.47 134.47 so around right there so that's a good dollar 36 winner I'll take it that's the trades I want to take that nice little shoots up pulls back goes back up again cool okay the next trade was, let's go to Disney. So I took a stab at Disney. Um, I feel bad for Disney because they reported horrible earnings and they do. I used to go to Disney World when I was a kid and I love the magic of it. So I hope after Corona it gets back on its feet. Um, anyway, so I hopped in at 9.47 on Disney at 103.07. Uh, pretty much like right here so the idea was i had this previous bar as resistance to 103.14 that i was drilled from before what i like about this kind of setups is that it kind of goes up kind of chests it fails kind of comes down sellers take profit it curls back up and then shoots up i took a similar trade on this on um I was at a Facebook or Microsoft a few days ago, and it does pretty consistently well for me. I ended up taking a 50 cent winner on this because I sold Disney then at 9.52 on this red candle at 103.64, which is a good winner. My profit target was met. I wanted to pull the trigger and lock in my profits. Good. Obviously, in hindsight, it went back up. At the same time, it could have went back down. You know, so once your profit target is hit, take the shares. I only trade with one shares really, so I couldn't take a partial. But if I was trading with larger sizes, I would sell around 75 to 80 percent of my position, let the other 20 or 25 percent run to see if I could just get extra money. If not, I stop out. It's not a question of you know how much if I'm going to make money, but rather how much money will I make. Cool. So that was Disney. Now I took one more trade on EA. So notice the thing. That's a lot of stocks I traded. It was just kind of all over the place. Hop in, see what I could do. It was more of, let me see, let me take a, a stab at a bunch of stocks and let's see what pays out. What I like to trade and how I like to trade is I like to be more um, meticulous and more targeted in my trades. So less trades with a higher certainty or higher frequency of winning. Obviously that sounds easier said than done, but if you kind of just take a step back, 
take a deep breath and just kind of double down. It's like doubling down on what you're certain. So if you really have a good conviction, go for it. Don't try to just don't go for breath, go for depth. Okay. All right, so EA, I hopped in at 9.45. Can't see that. There you go. 9.45. Boom. Okay, 9.45 for 103.07. Oh, no, that's not it. 115.95. Wow, that's very high. Uh, my fill was even higher than the top of this candle. Oh, that's what I'm looking at the wrong thing. No, yeah, not 45. Wow. So I don't even know how I got filled like that, but okay. I guess my fill was even above this candle. Um, yeah, so again, this kind of is a VWAP reclaim. It kind of sells off, pops up VWAP, pulls back down, and then shoots back up. The correct entry would have been getting in pretty much on this candle, looking for a, a re-break there. Um, don't know why I took the trade, to be honest. I just saw it, kind of liked it, but again... Less stocks, more conviction. I ended up down on EA with a small loser of around 92 cents, so kind of a bigger loser than I usually take. I sold it at 10 o'clock. So I sold it on this candle. And the correct stop should have been probably around there, but I was watching, again, when you invest in a bunch of other trades, you have to kind of split up your attention into all the trades so you can't focus on one trade so that was another issue um take one trade at a time and really try to focus in on that cool so i ended down on ea 92 cents okay so that kind of brings me to the main bulk of my emotional roller coaster which would be facebook Okay, so as you see, I'm up on the day on Facebook $20.82. So with that, I'm technically up total on the day around 15 bucks, but I actually took a trade on Robinhood buying puts, betting that the uh, price of Facebook would go down, and I lost on that. So before we look at the TD Ameritrade trade, trade, let's take a look at this kind of options trade I did. So I'm switching to the five-minute chart. So what I did was... If you look throughout in the beginning of the day, it was selling off and it was kind of just testing VWAP failing, testing VWAP failing. So it was below VWAP all day. And then it started to kind of form a little bit of a descending triangle. So I was thinking that um, it was just kind of, you know, kind of just go just, no, that's not what I want to do. It was just kind of, kind of go down like that. But it didn't, and um, it ended up shooting back up. But I kind of entered pretty much around the top of this support resistance line, pretty much right there, and I was up thirty bucks. I kind of I got in on this candle, and I was up thirty bucks. I bought two puts, up thirty dollars, thirty five dollars, ten percent in like a minute. Ethan, take the profit. $35 in a minute, 10% of one minute. It's foolish for, it was so foolish for me not to lock in the profits. I was up $35. I would have been up around 50 bucks on the day. But instead, you know, I was like, I don't want $35, I want more. And of course, when you swing, when you try to swing for a home run, you often strike out. And it's not the best analogy because if you strike out, there's no harm, right? You just strike out. But when you, in the trading, when you try to hit a home run, you strike out, but you strike out and then lose money. So it's not like, okay, I'm not going to, it's not like instead of making $30, I only made $5. No, I actually ended up on this options trade down $37, down more than I was ever up. That's the issue. So it kind of pulled back up and I kind of stopped, I, not stopped, but I sold the option up here or right here actually. And then... I saw a VWAP reclaim, which Facebook has been doing a lot. So what I love to trade is this kind of VWAP reclaim where it kind of sells off, tests some support, and kind of a U, U-ish V looking thing, comes back up, pops over VWAP, 
goes down, test VWAP, and comes back up. So I actually got in 50 shares pretty much right here, and I made $20, $21, $20.82 on it. So at the end of the day, this was exhausting. I was up $35 on the Facebook option trade, and it turned into, well, then so I lost $35, so now I was on break even zero dollars and then it went down another thirty seven dollars so it's frustrating it's it's looking back at this and it's hard to do these recaps because looking back you're like why would you do that i was up 10 percent in one minute 10 percent in a minute the annualized return for the entire market on average is like eight percent for the entire year, 8%. I was up 10% in like a minute. And I didn't pull a trigger to sell, I wanted more. And it's a good lesson, I wanted more and I ended up with negative, I lost $37. So today was jam packed, a lot of lessons to be learned. And um, all you could do is, as frustrating as it is, all you can do is, you know, sometimes I don't like how the markets are closed on weekends because I just want to trade. but. It's good the markets are closed because you need, for new traders, you need time to relax and, you know, take a backseat, reflect on your trades, and you need some time off to clear your mind and do other stuff. So I'll be back tomorrow with another trade recap. Hope you enjoyed.